All right, let's talk about the Canadian state-run media lashing out at the rejection of progressivism. Whoa, 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 whoa. State-run media, are, are you serious? Are you serious? This isn't North Korea. This is, this is Canada, land of the free. Well, technically speaking, it is state-run media if it's owned and financed by the government. Now, there, there's this really amazing statistic that, you know, will we'll tell you a lot about Canada. So, get this. Uh, two out of every ten people you know will be a strong, outspoken progressive. And then, four out of t those ten people are gonna be more of a, a very, uh, moderate progressive. They're gonna agree to progressivism, but they're not, uh, big advocates of it, but they're still, you know, I don't know, uh, what do you call it, fiscally conservative, whatever bullshit that is. And those last four out of ten people are people that self-center because they don't want to be called a bigot and fired. That is, except for the very rare individual Canadian that makes up a very teeny tiny one out of 100 that is, you know, just an incredible wild card madman that will actually speak out against progressive ideas. Like this guy. You can't see, but I'm pointing to myself with my thumb. And those statistics are, of course, from the Bureau of Personal Anecdotes. You can go to www.personalantidotes backslash I pulled it out of my ass dot gov. Anyways, enough of that bullshit. Um, <sighs> Canadian campuses see an alarming rise in right-wing populism. See, this is where the CBC is at its worst or, or best for rebutting in, in my case because I'm, I'm, I run a YouTube channel where I criticize the media, you know, if you haven't noticed. But you know, when, when the CBC actually just reports straight-up facts and doesn't do these crappy opinion pieces, it's actually half decent because even if it's lying by omission, it's at least only lying by omission, where opinion pieces are straight up ideological bullshit. Now the issue with this headline is the fact that it's an alarming rise in right-wing populism, that you know we should be alarmed that the right-wing is growing in strength. See the problem is the sleight of hand here. Let's label the, the frickin' right-wingers as a problem so that nobody becomes more right-wingers. And hence the purpose of the article. Anyways, this is an article about, you know, the CBC getting mad about posters on colleges' campuses because, you know, apparently that's, that's what the CBC gets mad about is, is posters because, I don't know, politically active citizens are an issue. Oh, wait, it's politically active citizens that don't agree with you that are the issue, right? Yeah, forgot. That's progressive. Let's go. Uh, posters like this have appeared around Montreal's McGill University last year. Stephen Zhu says there's been a disturbing surge in right-wing and racist propaganda on Canadian campuses. And this is their example. It's time to make Canada great again. Woohoo. And then, of course, ban Islam, ban communism, and ban faggots, I, I guess. Islam, not a race. Communism, not a race. And faggots are not a race. Where's your racist propaganda? Oh, and, and speaking of propaganda, yeah, this is, this is, this is real hardcore shit, you know, you know, like, like, ten, ten, ten minutes, ten solid minutes in word. So anyways, those who think that Canada is the last bastion of liberal tolerance in the West should expect their political imagation beyond the halls of power, and in particular, take a look at what's happening on Canadian campuses where there's been a recent surge in right-wing and racist propaganda. Last bastion of liberal tolerance. I'm sorry, but there's people that have opposing ideas than you do. Sorry. It may be true that the right-wing in Canada has yet to cough up the same kind of populism threat now arising in European liberal democracies like France, Germany, or the Netherlands, because, you know, people don't like getting raped and, and blown up and, and trucks apiece. They're just, they, they just fucking hate trucks apiece, guys. Holy shit. But the success of President-elect Donald Trump has emboldened native, nativist elements of Canadian society just the same. And nowhere has this been more obvious than on Canadian university campuses. In the past few months alone, posters, flyers, and other paraphernalia promoting hardcore right 
slogans have been found on campuses across the country, including McGill, the U of T, U of A, and McMaster's University, among others. Some of these materials display outright racist messages. For instance, posters were found on the University of Alberta's campus that read, Fuck your turban! And white students' union advertisements were also found on several campuses in the greater Toronto area at around the same time. Well, let's look at the thing in question. Fuck your turban. If you're so obsessed with your third world culture, go back to the fuck where you came from. Non-integration, hashtag invasion. Again, again where, where's the racism? People being upset about people not integrating into society and, and adopting Canadian culture is not racism. Cultures are not races. You dig? This is a result of an emboldening populist wave following the election of Trump, an event that has also inspired several elected officials on the Canadian right to espouse a similar populist message. Because they're not stupid. Because they're trying to appeal to their voting constituents. Dumbass. The campus propaganda, it's propaganda when the right wing does it, right? Not, not when the CBC does it, is a sign when this wave has reached an outer fringe of the right wing. What's looking to regain a certain kind of footing among the youth. No, you know what it is? Is it's because the youth have been told not to say certain things, do certain things, and hold certain political opinions. See, telling kids not to do something... I hate to break it to you. Encourages rebellion. I rebel. And not that type of rebellion. Universities are, to an extent, a microcosm of the wider society. They're supposed to encourage the free exchange of ideas. Yes, you've been silencing those free exchanges of ideas. That's why these ones are popular. Fuck. You don't, just guys just don't get it, do you? A principle that can be exploited to facilitate movements that center on hardcore populist ideas. Such as, say, regaining lost Canadian values in the age of immigration and refugee. I'm sorry about that jump cut. I had to cut it out because I started hysterically laughing like a loser. It sounded really bad. You don't want to hear it. But holy fucking shit, this guy is legitimately arguing against Canadian values to Canadians. Are you, are you fucking serious? <laughs> Jesus Christ. These people are nuts. These people are fucking nuts. Do, do, do I need to say any more? Are, are, we, are we fucking done here? I mean, the next paragraph is him explaining that the white nationalists are, uh, you know, infiltrating the right by focusing on terrorism, immigration, and law and order, you know, because the left refuses to accept that as even rational. You can't even have a discussion about that, otherwise you're racist, but of course, he doesn't mention that part. Presumption that racism against whites isn't real. Explaining the alt-right, explaining Richard Spencer. Okay, here's something interesting. Thus, the urge to marginalize multicultural norms and to curb open society principles is no longer displayed in terms. Rather, it's captured and expressed by slogans like, Make Canada Great Again. And then explains that one to you like you haven't noticed that there was just an election south of the border. Regardless, I guess what he's trying to say there is that Make Canada Great Again essentially means you want to marginalize multicultural norms, which, uh, kind of dumb, but we'll give them that one. You gotta, gotta give them something, for fuck's sakes. There's, there's nothing here, guys. But I love this sleight of hand here. Similarly, denouncements of racialized or minority communities' vocal advocacy, like Black Lives Matter, hold up! Black Lives Matter does not speak for all black people. No, 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 no. Identity Politics 101. Black Lives Matter is a movement, and it doesn't speak for all black people, fuck. And I love this shit too. It's a sign that whoever's responsible is looking to young people for response and to campuses as a possible setting for mobilization. What are you talking about? 
Like, he just assumes that there's some sort of secret campaign, secret Nazi campaign, to recruit on the colleges. Maybe it's just fair to assume that the youth is sick of identity politics? And of course, the university's response. To put up flyers that say they tried to divide us and our communities and scapegoat marginalized communities for the systematic, economic, and social problems caused by capitalism. Jesus, fuck, could you say anything more Marxist? God, this is why people hate you. You want to redistribute their income, you fucking lunatics. Any attempt to legitimize right-wing, racist, and fascist views in politics and society will not be debated. They must be given zero tolerance and fought. Why the hell did you get to dictate what a reasonable opinion is? And you fucking wonder why the youth are in revolt. Seriously, fucking progressives. And the sun said a right when opinions be not discussed. So, posted a day Pepe to the school Facebook site. That, 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 was, that was fucking terrible. Do it live!